Goliath claims to be the meta when it comes to interconnecting low power IoT devices with the cloud. It includes features like over the air updates, real time data transfer, and remote control all built in. Now they've released a dev board tasked with showing it all off. But does it actually deliver on its promise, or is it all smoke and mirrors? Let's find out. Chris, let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about yes. what Goliath do, because you're going to introduce us to a board. That's the whole point Great. of what we're going to talk about yes. on this yeah. on, on this discussion. So before we get to the board, let's just start with what Goliath do, and then we'll work our way down, and then you can tell us all about the board. Sure. Goliath is a cloud platform that makes it easy to send over their updates to handle your data streaming from your device, your uh, constrained IoT device back to the cloud, out to other services, out to, you know, to handle, to talk to apps, all that sort of thing. And then also for command and control. So you want to turn on an LED, you want to flip the relay, you can do that from the cloud through the REST API directly on the Goliath console down to the device. So basically all your needs for pushing out new versions of, uh, of firmware to your devices and then data back and forth, including things like AI, uh, machine learning models and things like that as well even for constrained devices. So we talk about bringing the power of the full internet down to tiny power, power constrained, data constrained devices. Right, excellent. So if I'm, if I'm a design engineer today and, I'm trying to, and I've got a typical device, what's the sorts of very typical devices that you find your software, your platform interacting with today so that we can just give them context? I know we're talking about the whole concept of moving data from a, from a device up into the cloud where you can manage it. You can either do over there updates or you can manage the device remotely using your platform. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actual design engineer working today, what would be the very typical application that you would be interacting with today? Yeah, I think uh, microcontroller, you know, something like, a, what we're gonna talk about in a little bit is a, a dual Cortex M33. Mm -hmm. So kind of that era of, of microcontroller Probably, you know, a mega flash and, you know, half a mega RAM, that sort of level of things, probably running in RTOS, definitely has a communication device on it and therefore a communication stack within the RTOS as well. So really that's kind of the sweet spot. We often do a lot of stuff with Zephyr, the RTOS ecosystem, but we also work with ESP IDF. And then we support a couple other free, free RTOS ports that are out there as well. But often we need an RTOS in order to handle things like uh, the communication stack, the security, and then ultimately the scheduling of all those things in there. That's really where the RTOS it becomes important. So if you're not going to do that, then you have to do something more like an offloaded version of Goliath. We actually just published about a version of Goliath running inside a BG95 modem, but really that full SDK stack is running inside the modem. And then you could talk to it from external things that aren't running in RTOS. So if you're a pure bare metal programmer, you're going to need to do something like an offload. But if you're doing an I IoT device, very often you are running an RTOS of some sort, and that's going to yep. fit really nicely into Goliath. Yeah. So you, so that's your typical embedded devices out in the field, waiting yep. to communicate, taking in data, wanting to get the data off the system, and then get it to you into the cloud so you can analyze it and then send data back or updates, or even, as you then described, control the device from your control panel up in the cloud. That's right. Okay. Yep. I think that's a concept that we understand. So you've explained what Goliath do, and then you come out with this board. So that's where we caught up with you, and we thought, oh, that'd be interesting. That, that, that's the sort of thing that we're very interested in our, in, our, in our community. So tell us about the board that you've brought out and how that fits in with that system that you've just described. Sure. Well, whereas Goliath is a cloud platform, we have cloud engineers. We also have firmware engineers. I am a complete... Uh, uh, beginner when it comes to all that stuff. I'm actually a hardware engineer. So my role at the company is to make hardware that basically enables people to build systems and products on top of it. And so basically I get to kind of play the part of a lot of our customers. And so in doing so, I've built hardware over time, built I've with my teammates, I built out these reference designs, which are like verticalized versions of, you know, approximations of what people might build for their, you know, their product company or as a development, a product development shop. At the end of the day, we've we've started to standardize on these different models. And the one that we're looking at here is called the Aliadel Elixir. Aliadel is a silly, uh, I, I really got into like alchemical names <laughs> for all things because it was like magic in a, in a container or in a box. Um, and we've had different versions of it. This is the latest incarnation. It fits into this. Uh, this is a Bud, uh, Bud Industries box. It's a standard box. The thing I like about it is it's got these... Uh, these flanges on it, but it's really just off the shelf. And that's really where the shape comes from. And then we try to just 
squeeze as much stuff into there as we can. Uh, and then yep. this fits a lot of the things we've already talked about here. So the NRF9160 is a part from Nordic Semiconductor that runs yep. Zephyr, a version of Zephyr, really NRF Connect SDK, which is a port of Zephyr. Uh, it's got an ESP32C3 as an offloaded modem. Uh, that helps us to do things like Goliath's new location service. So you want to scan all the access points in an area. You might want to do that, look at the cell towers and get an approximate location without even plugging in a GPS antenna. Super great. There's other power handling on here. And so say you wanted to have 12 volts, you know, you're in a car, you have 12 volts off your CAN bus uh, or rather off your OBD2. You could plug that in and use that to power your board. Uh, you could pu plug in a solar panel. You can do all this stuff. There's battery charging, kind of all the starter IoT things. So really, this is just me saying, I want to cover as many use cases as we can. And then I also want to plug in as many different types of sensors as we can. So then on the back side here, uh, actually, this is the top side. Uh, we also lean into the microelectronica click ecosystem, which is just so many sensors. I mean, like, I think there are almost a 2,000 2000 click boards that break out different sensors and motor drivers and all the anything you can dream of they have it and they have these standard set of headers here super useful for <clears throat> prototyping and and getting stuff up and going quickly so we were able to fit two of those into this into this format here you can see the power connector in the upper left there sim card for the uh for the cell modem uh there's a little buzzer so we wrote little tunes like mario playing out of the buzzer uh and really it's just kind of a as many interfaces as we could squeeze into this thing. And then we had this board, we've been using it for our own design. We're like, we should make this accessible to other people. We already open sourced it, but that's a little different. You know, Doing a fully open source design is like saying to someone like, hey, you can build this with whoever you want, just go and spin up your own production. It's like, well, actually we're gonna offer this now uh, for limited sale as well, just to get people right. started and bootstrapped up. Right, so the whole point of this actual development board is that you've offered a whole in infrastructure an old ecosystem with some extremely well-known parts you put the you put zephyr in there as well so you can play with it and you can evaluate it so, so, so the whole point is you're showing how your um your platform will interact with that board you've got all yeah. the platforms that you need there i mean you've just used you know um household names in terms of all that in uh, uh in terms of all that connectability uh, mm -hmm. Did I just make up a word? Connectability. <laughs> it's a, a new one. Connect yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm stealing. Connectivity. One. I've only been doing yeah. this for thirty years, but I just made up a new word. Connectability. <laughs> um, so connectivity is the word I think I was looking for. Um, so uh, and then you've put all these sensors. Was I think you mentioned two thousand sensors that then you can evaluate against, get data in, put it through the system, and then send it off to to, to Goliath to evaluate. But then you can come back. And then you can manage that board. So you've actually given an absolute platform where somebody who's saying, right, I need to start from now and I don't want to go and reinvent the wheel, but I want to be able to look at it, which is there's a lot going on there. If you're starting a project, there's a yeah. lot going on there with hardware, software and the cloud. And you put all that together into one. And just show us that again, that little box that you had there. The, the, the oh, this one, yes, no, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. So this yes. is this also has a battery in it. You know, it's got a three D yeah. printed plates on it. None of this is actually required, but it is also you know kind of all folded together to try and fit all this stuff in here. And then you know, like a click header is something that looks like this. This plugs right in uh, this way. Yep, it is not keyed on this, so that's that's the only downside. But then you can see there's you know there's a, a board that fits in here and, and a whole range of different boards. You know, I've got them all over my desk. Um, so different things yeah. like. CAN bus, uh, weather sensors, this is a stepper driver. Um, the unshown thing, you know, the thing with, you know, as a hardware engineer, uh, the thing I, I always want to design hardware and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then it was like, and then it's like Coyote, uh, Wiley Coyote kind of like stepping off a cliff and then there's nothing below me because there was no firmware and no cloud. Well, this actually has a open source template as well that is perfectly targeted. This hardware It's perfectly targeted at the Goliath cloud side applications. So like OTA is already built yeah. in and working. Uh, it's got our settings service. So you basically just kind of plug in what settings you want to, you want to control from here. So you want to change the, how often this thing's reporting, you just change it. You know, you set up the setting in the cloud, you it's already in here and listening for it. Uh, that's the stuff that ultimately, like, that's what I think about and think about what I need. Uh, and that yes. is already working. You can just download a binary right off GitHub and it's super useful yeah. there. So when you first plug that in, all the hardware is working, everything that's on there is working. And the most powerful thing about this 
is it's going to connect you to Goliath so that you can do all the looking at what's going on, um, yeah. which, you know, with normal development evaluation kits, you're not going to be able to do that because you're going to have to find your, I'm not going to say that word that I made up a moment ago. Uh, the whole point is it's actually displaying how you can look at it coming down from the cloud and you can look at it hardware, you can look at the software, you can look at the sensors, and then you can interact with it. So not, not only look at it, but you can interact with it. That's the, yeah. that's the real uh, selling the key, point of this. Yeah, well, the key point is those 2,000 boards, you know, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be those 2,000 boards that are offered from Microelectronica. We don't have all the code for that. Some of, those, some of the code drivers for those are within Zephyr's ecosystem. Some of them are not. So really, that is really where a firmware hardware engineer is going to be able to buy that off the shelf they probably will have to write a little bit of code, maybe some glue code if the driver already exists, and put that into our stream, you know, our pipelines that sends data up to the cloud, and then you kind of view it and pass it to other places. So that is the task of a lot of people, myself included. When I'm building a new reference design, I find a new sensor, I plug it in, find the driver, write the driver, interface with it. But then, but then within the template, I just kind of put it within this certain section. It sends it up to the cloud, and then and then the rest is magic, right? It's it's up there. I can yeah. send it out to an app. I can send it to AWS. I can send it to Azure. I can you know do a lot of different things with it. But but that that plumbing is already kind of in there, and it's already tied specifically yes. to this board, specifically to these uh, standardized headers as well, which really starts to to pay dividends uh, when you're trying to evaluate something new. Excellent. So how do they go about getting this board from you? There is a sign up. Uh, we can maybe drop in this video, but also there's a blog post where we, we uh, talk about it. And uh, basically, it's a sign up right now, uh, kind of early access. And uh, then we'll start reaching out to people and having uh, uh, purchaseability for this sort of thing. Excellent. And what sort of price do you think that will come in out of that board with all that? So, with all, that, with all that connectability, with all I that know, connectability. connectability. You know, you got to pay for connectability, right? Uh, <laughs> but. The connectability that you are paying for is really the, the <laughs> template, the connection. So all the Goliath cloud stuff for any kind of starter project is going to be uh, very within our free tier. Uh, but the board itself is 150 to start with uh, before shipping. Right. And uh, that's because it's just kind of got everything loaded in there. The whole idea is that this is really a starter point for products, we think. And uh, yes. we think that you'd really be able to, you know, optimize cost as you go to a market, you could pull in new things, but it's really just to get all that stuff going right away and then redesigning Rev B, Rev C, you've already got all your cloud connectivity in there. Really, this is just to get people bootstrapped up. Thank you very much for that introduction about Goliath. Yeah. Thank you very much to an introduction about your board, which is called? The LED Elixir from Goliath. Thank you. Excellent. All right. And, Thanks for having uh, me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll look for, look for an update and any more new boards that you have coming out with the uh, Goliath, Goliath connectivity, uh, looking at how you can use Goliath in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.